Since 1963, Riverbend has been providing high quality care for people with mental health disorders in their communities. It was the 1963 Community Mental Health Act signed by President Kennedy that allowed us to become part of a network of 10 community providers in the state of New Hampshire. Over the next few minutes, you're going to hear from our incredible staff about what it truly is like to work here at Riverbend. This is really hard work, there's no question about that. But it's incredibly rewarding because we at Riverbend know that treatment works. Thank you so much for considering becoming part of our team. For everyone that comes to the crisis apartments, it's, it's different. Their crisis is different. People come here that either have major depression um, and just have no hope anymore. Uh, we have people that come in that are struggling with addictions. The job is quite unpredictable because you never know who you're going to meet. You never know what kind of phone call you're going to get. You never know what's going to happen when you're out in the community. So you really have to be on your toes and think quickly. Emergency services, Melissa speaking. Sure, um, can I get your first name? Typical day here is uh, get here, make a cup of coffee. Uh, we go into meeting for a few minutes, seeing who's here, and uh, kind of play it by ear. Sometimes I'm doing assessments downstairs or I'm going to other people's homes. So we could have a clinician come out to your home probably be there in about the next 15, 20 minutes. Does that work for you? Okay, perfect. So we'll see you right around 1 o'clock, 1.15, okay? The peers, I think, You're have welcome, absolutely I changed how I do emergency services assessments. When I worked down in Massachusetts, we didn't have a peer support on our team, so it was very formal. It felt kind of forced in some ways and uncomfortable, but with the peer supports, things are a lot more relaxed and laid back. It's more of a conversation as opposed to an assessment and I think that makes everybody feel more comfortable including the individual that we're talking to. During the assessment at whatever point in time the peer support specialist will kind of just jump in um, to a relevant point and just share something of their experience that's very 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 compatible with what that person is saying at that given time and that really gives the person a sense of I think you know comfort because now all of a sudden we've gone from a, a mostly clinical you know, discussion to someone who's lived it and uh, understands it. As a peer, I feel the need to make sure that they know that they're not alone. There are people who understand and it's okay to talk about it. They don't need a lot of um, pressure. They don't need a lot of noise. If I can be as quiet as a mouse and just keep them knowing that somebody's there to listen to them, that's all I need to do. Knowing that you're not alone, knowing that there's a, a, someone there who's been through something just like you can, can give a, a, a hand up and a lot of companionship and uh, hope. Sometimes there's people you can't help. There's going to be people who are extremely suicidal and truly want to kill themselves. and we're going to do everything and anything we can to try and stop them but there's going to be those people that don't make that last phone call to try and get help and, and that's hard to say with sometimes. I get triggered every single time I, I do it because I remember where I was when I was at that moment um, and so I, I, I kind of move between remembering and being very frightened of that but also remembering and knowing where I am now and that there is hope. So. Um what is your situation today? You called mobile crisis and um, how, wh what's going on today? How can we help you today? Sometimes it is hard to hear the things that have happened to other people. You know, similar to people who are first responders, you know, constantly dealing with people in crisis can, can weigh on you, so you have to be really attentive to your self-care. I ended up speaking with the mother, and the mother started telling me things that her son didn't tell me, and that changed things dramatically, so it turned into a, an IEA. IEA? Involuntary uh, emergency admission. 
It's, it's stressful, it's emotional, um, it can be draining. But in the end, I think that that is so worth it because of how we're helping the community out. We support each other, we listen to each other, we give each other hugs when we need them, and it's, it's amazing. And I feel that at every level, from the most upper management down to the people who I work with every day. I feel like they really have compassion for the people they serve, that in general, people are treated really well with lots of respect and care. What more can you ask for in a career? I think it appeals to anyone who really is action-oriented and who is maybe a little bit more um, looking toward more, more a non-conventional kind of way to, uh, to work because it's, you're constantly in different situations all the time. I get so much out of coming to work every day. I feel like I make a difference in people's lives. I feel like my life has improved by just being able to relate to others, by being able to talk about some of the trauma that's gone on in my life and hear from others the trauma that's gone in, on in theirs. I love my job. I really love it. It's, um, it's, it's the best job I've ever had.